What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the K Reviews Podcast. I'm your host, Kenny Moss. I'm joined today by, once again, Loose T, hey. a.k.a. Tyler, a.k.a. DJ Atlas. That's right. That's right. The, one, the, the best DJ in Reno, Nevada. No no doubt about it. Absolutely. Book me. Mm-hmm. To the right, right of him, the best producer in Reno, Nevada, ooh, ooh. Oh Marco Hernandez. I don't believe it. A legend at Finding Samples. <laughs> produced the entirety of the album that we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. Um, Glad to be here. Yeah. We're going to be talking about Las Sombras, uh, mine and Marco's latest release. A mixtape that came out late last year, 2023. Um, And we're just going to kind of talk about the makings of it, you know, where we got samples from, uh, what the thought was going into lyrics or just the album overall, ask questions, whatever. Yeah. Just get into the makings of it. did record this once and then we fucked it up. So this is the second time. (laughs) Yeah, bruh. That's what I get. So I tried to record it in 4K. Sorry. Oh, no. Cuss all you want. (laughs) As long as you're not saying like. My aunt watches this, but my aunt cusses. You know what I mean? Okay. So as long as you're not being like super, super vulgar, yeah, vulgar, you know. doesn't matter. Okay, Shout cool. out to Kenny's aunt. Yeah. Hi, Mimi. Apologize. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And my mama. My mama watches these too. Hi, mom. Thanks. Um, my mom will for sure once I link this to her. <laughs> <laughs> for real. Just got to share the love, you know? But yeah, bro. I tried to record it in 4K and Marco told me, and I didn't listen like a dumbass. <laughs> he said, if you try to record it in 4K, it's going to take up too much space. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't listen. We got like... 10 minutes into the podcast and it stopped and we recorded like probably close to an hour long was that today that was last, last week. week oh no way yeah that stings dude yeah so now we're in just hd not 4k this time there you go yeah just yeah. just at 30 fps yes yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah honestly like this one two hours to make up for it uh <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about all that <laughs> uh, up for it. so the first one on the on the tape was lost and so like I, you obviously you told me before, but like, what's where did you find the sample for Lost? Like, how did you first hear that sample? The first time was through Madlib. Okay, yeah, me too. The Mad Lad himself. Yeah, me too. Yeah, uh, that exact album. Ones. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Ethics. They're from the '60s. Um, it's been sampled a couple times. Logic has a song with it too. Yep. Um, I haven't heard it just because I haven't found it, but. I looked up who uses the sample, and those were like the two biggest ones. Okay. Um, but yeah, I just made it in more of a style that you could like rap on it, because Madlib has it just like in a. It sounds like ethereal, you know, like mm-hmm. it just sounds like outer space. Mm. Yeah. Which is what the album cover looks like, but yeah, yeah, that's where I got it from, Madlib. For sure. Yeah, definitely, and I'd say you nailed it too, because um, I had heard that like long before. Okay. Obvi- and you know this, but long before I ever heard that beat, so. When I heard Madlib's version with that sample, I was like, "Oh, I want to, I want to rap on this." But with Madlib's, it's like it was made to be like cinematic almost, like okay. not really In the background to something. Yeah, like not really made to be rapped on. Gotcha. So, so like a like a like a movie scene, like something's happening and it's kind of just generating a mood or something. Yeah. It's just super atmospheric, yeah. yeah. And so like when I heard Marco's version, I was like, "Shit, this is the Madlib beat that I wanted to rap on," and, but he just made it like more East Coast, just like more more. Drums that are like more made to be wrapped up. Uh, wait, wrapped it up, did, you, dude. did you know, or like, did you tell him that? You I never to? told him that. He what? just yeah, no, no, way. I never told him that. That's crazy. Part of the actually. thing with this album is, uh, I had no idea what it was gonna be about. Kenny just hit me up. He was like, "Can I use some of your beats for this for this project I'm working on?" I was like, "Absolutely." That's why I make these these beats. And then it wasn't until he sent me the track list and the playlist itself that I was like, "Oh, holy shit! This is like this album like represents." In hindsight, what I was going through in the time, I was just like living it. But I was like, "Damn, this is this is crazy. This is some good stuff." So, that's sick. That's yeah. sick. And that's what I was thinking too. Especially, especially in Lost. Um, like I just thought it was such a great way to introduce the album. Like it was just, it was so good. It was just a beautiful energy to start with, you know. Um, and I think the sound of it too was like an upgrade from uh, MKS. Like, okay. like just the production style or like the sound of it, you know, like the phonics, I think is a great way to describe it. Just we're already so much better um, with the first track. Like it was it was really cool to hear. That's dope. That's that's dope. Started strong for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that that's pretty cool that um, you felt like it related to like what you had been going through. Cause, the shadows, las sombras. Yeah. Because like I had mentioned to you, like we... We didn't see each other during like its whole creation, other than when we when we all went to Vegas together. Right. Yeah. And these were beats that Marco had made forever ago. So like, 
the fact that I was inspired to make something over them that like related to your situation now, was just, that's that's wild to me. That's pretty yeah. cool to me. It's, it was meant to be, for sure. That's pretty sick. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, Lost. I think when I first wrote it, um, I was like, okay, yeah, I'm gonna start the tape with this one. Like that was, so when I first started making this, it was like supposed to be practicing mixing. It mm. wasn't even like, I wasn't even necessarily planning on releasing it. Um, and that was one of the, the tracks that like I had, but I remember when I made it, I was like, whatever project this goes on, it's going to be the first song. Okay. And yeah. so then, um, when I kind of started to like pile up on songs over Marco's beats and I had sent him the text message being like, yo, I'm probably going to make an album over your beats. And, like, I had the plan to go forward with this. Then I was like, yep, that's the automatic first one. So then I just passed, passed out the rest of it from there. That's cool that you actually knew that this was going to be the first one. Because, like I was saying earlier, like, it's a perfect way to start the album out. So that's cool that you had already, like, known that, you know. Oh, yeah. Did you structure it like that, like, the whole way through the album? Or just, like, the first song? You were like, I know this one's going first. Everything that comes after, we'll see. So one, the way I do projects, um, I like to have the beats laid out like for the most part before I even really start writing s the songs. Oh really? Okay. So like once I had made the decision to go full force into like making a full mixtape, um, I knew this one was going to be first. So I just placed it at first. And then I was like, okay, what beat would I think would be a good contrast and like sound good coming after this one. And so that's okay. when I grabbed Japanese woman, Japanese woman, okay. which is the beat for soulmates. Um, and and place that one there and then um i had psychology of the fool after that trips after that i, I laid it all out based on what i thought sounded good in se sequentially after one another okay and some of them i had written already had songs over then some of them i hadn't yet um but then you sent which way to the group chat and i was inspired yeah. by which way and yeah. i wrote it and then i was like oh shit i like this one i want this to be one of the first few so i threw it in after soulmates in. okay but yeah that's how the sequencing kind of kind of happened i usually map out sequencing First, because I want the project to sound like one full project. Like, oh, I want it right. to flow well yeah, together. And, and it is cohesive. Story. Yeah. It does flow, like like Lucas was saying. Um, it flows really well, like, the whole way through. It feels like a, it has a start, a middle, and an end. Yeah. Like, it literally does flow. Mm. Yeah. And th and that's that's the goal every time. So that's, like, even the projects that I've told you guys that, like, I plan on putting out this year and stuff, like, the beats sonically, like, already mapped out. Like, and, I, and even songwriting wise i already know what i'm gonna write over them i just haven't necessarily written those songs yet that's really that's um, a great way to roadmap an album i think that's that's how i like to do it because yeah. um i feel like once i see like a vision of it fully that's when i can like actually like strive towards that i feel like if i'm just making random songs i never really get a full identity enough to like make it into a project and right. I, and like i'm i'm an albums dude like my favorite artist like i listen to full albums on repeat i listen to full albums more than i listen to anything else like that's how i consume Damn. music uh. so i'm just i'm obsessed with like the idea of like an album in its entirety like working together like that's wild i'm like the complete opposite <laughs> yeah I, I listen to like one song off an album and then the rest i'm like i'll listen to them like if they come on i won't skip them yeah but there's like a certain song i'm gonna go back to every single time and that, yeah. But that's sick, though, because, like, most people that I come across, that's how they consume music. Like, yeah. it's very meticulous, specific stuff that they grab onto. And, yeah. like, for some reason, like, I've always been obsessed with, like, well, what was this person trying to accomplish, like, in, in its entirety? Like, mm. what is the world they're trying to set up, like, in its entirety here? That's so true. I've always been, like, obsessed with that. So Okay. That's really cool. Well, and especially when it's actually, like, a good story, too, or, like, a really great album. You know, Because then it's worth it to go back to it every single time, you know? It's one but of I the guess, few that I have yeah. done that. I listen in its entirety, mainly because I'm going to be on a podcast and talking about it, and I was yeah. part of it. <laughs> yeah. But also, it's just like, I want to listen to this, you know? Mm. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, I, I liked this one. I think that's why I ended up putting it out, because like, like I said, it started, I just needed practice mixing, because um, Johnny mixed the last project, mm -hmm. and so I knew he wasn't going to be able to mix future projects. And so I was like, I have to learn to mix on my own. And so this... That's what a lot of these songs, like especially like Trips and um, Mundane and like other songs like that, like they started as like just for me to practice mixing. Dang. And then, um, but then like once I had it and like once I made the com commitment to making it a full project and then I had the full project and I like listened to it and I was like, it's not perfect, but I like it. I was like, why well, sit on it? Like, I like this. So Yeah, I might as well drop it. Especially because uh, that's a part of the catalog, you know? 
Yeah. And and it like, was like it was such like a a weird like two month period of my life that I feel like lives in a capsule. Like it's a two month period of my life that is like a very distinct two month period of my life. And like it's just fully represented in the in this project. Mm. It's and like, it's and this project is as vague about it as that part of my life felt. So it like That's wild. It fits well. Well part of one of your bars was like sorry. No, but yeah, you're yeah. you're like uh they say that I'm lazy three albums one time. Homie don't hear that shit that, that don't, shit even don't phase, phase me. me. Yeah. I'm like that's fucking true, dude. Like you've put out music pretty consistently and like in large quantities in a short amount of time and it's mm. like it's it's so sick. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of growth that comes that comes with that or from that, you know. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you. Um we could get into Soulmates. Okay. So where did you find that sample? That was Bread and Butter. It's a Japanese band uh, from an album called Monday Morning. From the 70s or 80s, one of those two decades. Um, Sounds 70s to me, if yeah. I was going to guess. <laughs> yeah, so good. <laughs> That's like my favorite beat, probably. Or one of my favorite beats, for sure. It's a, it's a popular here. beat, even on my SoundCloud. So I'm glad you used it. Um, yeah, nothing but good things to say. <laughs> I mean, I thought it was great too. I love like the. It almost sounds very like West Coast. It does, yeah. Which which I think is really interesting now hearing that it's a Japanese sample. Yeah. And so like that's when you slow it down, some of their guitars sound like those synthesizers that they use in the West Coast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it definitely yeah, has that yeah. like bounce. It's kind of bouncy too. Like it has that. Yeah. Yeah, it's got that West Coast sound, which I thought was really cool. That was probably one of my favorite parts um, about Soulmates was just that sound. Yeah, that came with it, you know. It was really cool. No, yeah. the beat definitely like is I, I, for me. For me, the beats <laughs> carry majority of this album, if I'm being honest. But yeah, that beat is like one of my favorites that that Marco ever did mm. for sure. Appreciate it. Um, as far as like the lyrics, is just like so the idea, of, the concept of the album is this idea of like previous relationships like sticking to you like shadows, and they like follow you around and they affect. Yeah. how you do current things right absolutely and so um this two month period of my life i was in a state of like oh i i, I like don't i was in such a state of distrust that i wanted to abandon like my relationship right and so like this song i feel like there but there was that obvious like back and forth of like well but like i love this person this person is like super important to me i'm super close to this person but then there's also this like because of shadows following me i can't like trust fully right mm. because of things that have happened in the past i'm letting right. that affect my current situation right mm. so that song was just lyrically going through that those two sides of like oh i won't like i i might leave but if i do leave i think it's a soulmate i'm leaving so that was like the the kind right. of premises of the song but then my dumbass decided to, and it was it just happened naturally at the time. I didn't even think about it till after I had written it. But my dumbass decided to go with football wordplay for the entirety of the uh-huh. first verse. <laughs> and so afterwards I had the song. I was like, oh, this song is kind of like beautiful in a way, like in premise. But like, I don't know how my girlfriend is going to feel hearing this song. Like we've moved, we've moved past what was talked about in the song. Mm-hmm. And then of the references to football. Yeah. Cause she was <laughs> like, oh, you're talking about breaking up with me, but football word play. like i didn't know how she would like react to that so right. i was kind of but she was super cool about it she actually <laughs> fucked with it which is like the, and this is this is one of her favorite songs so like but yeah i i it didn't hit me till afterwards that football word play was a very goofy choice for a song like that was like this like I mean, serious, serious i guess yeah yeah, yeah. To offset the tone you know yeah yeah but i think um not only in the first verse, but like just the whole song in general, lyric wise, um, it's a great representation of the story that you're telling. Like, like um, I just thought you did a really good job of telling that story, because um, uh, I mean, well, I was just reviewing it here before we like started recording and stuff, and um, like there was so much stuff going on, I could like you know hardly fully pay attention to it, but um, it's just like it encapsulated me. I don't know if that's actually the right word for that, but it encapsulated me, you know? I don't, I don't know if that's the right word for that. I know what you mean, though, and that's I a, that's a sick-ass compliment. Yeah, sure. and it's yeah. like, um, 
like even with all this stuff going on, like I could still really understand like what you were trying to say and what mood you were trying to generate and things like that, you know. So, um, just saying. So average. I thought Soulmates was was great all around, like through production and through uh, like lyricism and things like that too. And and what you said about tone was super important for me, like on this one, because my my aunt who was uh, Mikey's mom, mm. when she listened to the last album, she was like you sound so like sad. Like there's so many depressing things or so many dark things on this album. Like you don't have to make happy party music all the time, but in just promise me like in your future music, it won't be so sad. It won't be so like mm. depressing right. or dark. Yeah. And I, and so like w even when I sat down to write sad topics, like on soulmates, like I still wanted to keep the tone brighter because that stuck with me. I was like, cause I was like, Oh, which like is why it, I like that you use that beat because it's such it's such like a feel good type right. of mm -hmm. it's a feel good thing but like the topic is there but you still you still do it well with the wordplay so if you listen to it you're not just like damn this dude's really going through shit you're like okay you know like it's still like you could be cruising in your car and like be having a great time you know it's not a depressing song you know? by any means yeah, yeah. it's like the opposite and that, and that's dope because that was the goal so yeah yeah almost Absolutely. like a like a hey ya uh, by outcast yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and that that's like a constant thing in music is like the the, the happy music with the depressed lyrics like mm. that's like a mm -hmm. that's a super a famous thing like right yeah, yeah. hey y'all one of one of the like biggest examples of that so yeah like, yeah yeah honestly yeah but this is gonna go on the list with that so now <laughs> when now when people think about it they're gonna be like oh yeah you know that one kenny ma song <laughs> maybe one day maybe <laughs> hey y'all by outcast is my favorite song on this album yeah <laughs> <laughs> We'll get the feature one day. That would be crazy. Three stacks yeah. on, a, Andre, on a luminous up. song. Bro. Or we'll hit you up. Even uh, for a flute, man. Even for a flute. Yeah. Like, <laughs> shit, I'll take a whole flute interlude from yeah, Andre. Straight Easy. Up. Straight Easy. Up. Hit us up. <laughs> <laughs> 775 is the area code. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then track three, which way? So all the beats on this album were like super old, right? Like you would say like... Yeah, they're they're all old school. Other, um, other than that one. Yeah, other than this one, I have no idea where the sample came from. <laughs> <laughs> Was this uh, from Paradise Plaza also? Yeah, so okay. Paradise Music Library, love y'all. Thanks for the for the music. Um, I don't know what sample it came from, but yeah, I just reworked the drums. So that's basically, basically it. And uh, yeah, so it was funny because like this project was already mapped out by the time you sent me that beat. Um, but then I just I ended up fucking with it and I and I immediately wrote to it as soon as he sent it. Which way do I go? Yeah, and I liked it's a it. Good song. It is a really good song actually. Um, if I can if I can cut you off real quick. Absolutely. I thought the the flows in this one were like super crazy. Like uh, it, it was cool because they were almost like new okay. to to like what maybe we're used to hearing from you. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, when you when you hear Kenny Moss like. You're like, yeah, this he can rap, you know what I'm saying? But like, there was a uh, there was some parts, and I think it was closer to the end in which way. But uh, you like you hit some flows that I don't think I've ever heard yeah. from you before, and I was the like, wait, what the faster tempo? Yeah, I was like, holy crap! These and the rhyme schemes that went with it too, though, like it was cool. So it was it was cool to see um, or to hear at least. Um, I don't want to say improvement, but like mm -hmm. like just something that was a uh, out of the ordinary. You know what I'm saying? Sick. As so, yeah. a rap song, it's. It's up there. That's it's like that's, top three. That's dope uh, to hear you say that because I didn't think about that at all when I was just rapping. Like mm. I was just writing. I was just rapping. Like so, that's it's why. it's cool that yeah yeah it's cool that you you felt that way about it. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and is it is is which way one of the top songs in the album? As far as like the most popular. Yeah. So yeah. Because it's got Apple that star music. next to it, right? Like. Yeah. So Apple Music has lost which way trips and holding on is the four most popular right now. Yeah, so which way is, is is on there? Which way almost was the second single. So I ended up going with Psychology of the Fool as the second single, mm -hmm. but which way was the other one that I was battling with? Like, oh, I can't. I maybe want to go with this one. Which way do you go with it? <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It, it yeah, fit. It fit. Um, but yeah, and then I'm glad it, you added it in. Yeah, I was oh, gonna yeah. say even with it being a latecomer, like that's that's funny that uh it's in there and it's in the top ranking songs yeah. yeah and i like the way it fit after soulmates too because the question on soulmates that like is posed to myself right mm -hmm. and then 
the second track is like I'm still toying with that, but right. I'm trying to. I'm still just kind of like rapping anyway. Like that was a common theme through this album is like, I'm still toying with this heavy decision that I don't know if I want to make and whatever else. And then, but I'm just rapping through and it all. you're asking like, yourself mm. like, which way do I go with this? And it, and it's kind of cool because like in a way the raps helped me make the decision at the end of the day. Mm. So. And speaking of the raps, I think I, uh, or I thought it was really cool how uh, this album, at least like even up to this point of, of the album, um, like, so far, it's all just very, like, punching in, punching out, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, you're just like, boom, here I am, I'm going to tell a quick story, and then and then we out. And then it's just boom, boom. So it's, like, all these, uh, like, quick punches, you know? Yeah. Uh, and so I really like that concept for the album, too, because, like, you're not, you're telling your story super good, but you're not giving away too much, or you're not uh, just giving too much, you know? Like you're I wanted giving, it to be vague. Yeah. yeah. And I yeah. think, like, it didn't seem vague. Like, the stories were all so clear. Mm-hmm. But with so little, you know, it yeah. was really cool. It was really cool to hear that. Um, and the whole album's like that. We're only on track three. But um, I noticed that by which way. Because, like, Lost Soulmates and then Which Way had come on, you know. And I was like, oh, this is sick. Like, the quick quick punching in, you know. Yeah. And that that was heavily inspired by Earl. Um, oh, really? So, at the time that I was writing this project. I don't like shit. I don't go outside. No. Um, Voir dire. That okay, he, okay. Yeah, yeah. That he did with Alchemist. Um that came out this year like that album came out right at the time that i started writing this project so the whole brevity thing the whole like just raps not a lot of hooks and like one minute two minute songs and like super complex wordplay like that's like almost the whole structure of this project was inspired by earl okay so um like i i just was in a big earl kick and i i was like you know what it would be sick i need to practice mixing and it would be sick if i made this project in earl style under 30 minutes Super brief, but still a lot packed into the brevity, and like that. So that was like a focus was to keep it short, quick, and like kind of snappy. That's like cool. That. See, so yeah. it's it's good that I'm noticing these things because you actually put effort <laughs> into those things, you know. So it's it's cool that it's not just me. Like it's actually your intention. Yeah, that's sick. So that's sick to hear you say that for sure. Uh, Psychology of the Fool, Marco. You said this one was your favorite. Yeah, yeah, this is my favorite song on the album. Just the way that you flow with it, on the beat and everything. It's like to me, it's the most like put together song, if that makes sense. I, I would um, agree for sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's just how I feel about it. No, I agree. Yeah. Um, sample on that, uh, some dude named um, also Marco Resende. Oh, okay. And Index, I, I forget what the song is called, but that's what the band is. Also, old school sample. I heard that and I was just like, hey, my name is Marco. I'll make a beat. (laughs) (laughs) And then I did. And then, yeah. So where did the idea come in for you to to add the George Bush sample? And and like, where did you get the idea of like fooled? Because this beat, when when you made it, was already called fooled. And and that's partly inspired the lyrics. So like, why did you go with the George Bush sample and the fool concept and everything? I don't know, because I'm a fool. (laughs) Me too. (laughs) Together. Um... (laughs) I don't know, I thought it fit for some reason. Just uh, like the vibe it gave off, just weird vocal samples. Mm-hmm. I thought that it was funny hearing a fool say such wise words. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I just, I don't know, I put it in, I, I thought it sounded good. Yeah, and I liked I liked that you, um, you made, like you replayed that sample like later on, like p- as part of the beat. So like, Throughout, yeah. It, you you would just hear the shame on you just like a little bit in the background and i loved that and it actually helped a ton in incorporating like how i was writing the song because i like helped structure it i ate, I, I literally structured like a bar to pl- like a specific bar for when the shame on you plays so like okay. i say i have a bar in there that's like kind of blasphemous and the shame on you plays right after that and i did Fuck, that shit okay. on purpose so Dude, like that makes so much sense i gotta incorporate more of that so i love i love that you did that like yeah. it just made the songwriting process for that song so much more fun like, that's good to hear that's yeah valuable feedback yeah that shit was awesome. that shit was super cool that was inspired by a youtube video i saw called the psychology of the fool i yeah. felt like i related to the fool and i watched the video like thinking it was gonna be like put the fool in a bad light, but instead it like really like Ooh. uplifted the fool. The fool is a very powerful archetype. Yeah. yeah. So I thought that was super interesting, and it inspired a whole goofy ass song about it, where I'm kind of rapping from the archetype of a fool, or like oh. a court jester, or like whatever. Right. But I still kind of related it back to my current situation, like because I, I felt like a fool going through what I was going through. Like, 
Like I didn't know. Like you mean to tell me I'm le- allowing things from forever ago to affect me currently and have me make stupid decisions? Like yeah. So that's, and that's what I was living. Yeah. At, in the time, I was just like Man. making bad decisions, and I was just like fuck. And then when you sent Felt this bad. through, I was just like, dude, this is these are like my thoughts put on paper. Hell yeah, that's dope. And you said that actually, you when you posted about the album, you said something like, uh, saying with bars what I s- was trying to say with beats or something like that. Yeah. And I was like, oh, that's sick. I didn't know Marco felt that way, like about the project. So that, oh, that was definitely, cool. Definitely, dude. There's a lot. There's a lot there. That was a great song. Yeah, definitely my favorite. For sure. Yeah, I think I think uh, I think that's the best one in my I'm opinion. Really surprised that it's not in the top top ranking. Yeah, me too, because it was released as a single before the project yeah. came out, too. And so it was, like, it was a great rollout single, too. Like, I thought I thought it was going to be uh, definitely up there, and so I'm surprised that it's not. I think people just hate it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to lie. I didn't, I didn't think people, like, this one isn't, like, like, the first single was Shadows of the Night, which is, like, kind of yeah. clubby a little mm. bit, or, like, poppier. That's what I was going for, too. Yeah, and that's, that's what, what I was going for as well, so... Okay. Um, but the psychology of the fool, I wanted the second single to be more in line of like, what are you hearing for the most part on the album? Mm-hmm. And so psychology of the fool, I felt like represented that. Yeah. But, oh, um, yeah. but yeah, so I didn't think people were going to like flock to it really as much as the first single. That okay. makes sense. Cause it doesn't have as much like pop drive, you know? Yeah. But it does surprise me that shadows of the night isn't, isn't one of the, the top ones either. Like, cause I would have thought right. that, Yeah. Especially with it being the rollout. You know? yeah. uh, but Trips. Trips was written two hours before you guys picked me up to go to Vegas. Okay. Um, Wait, so then what were you working on? Or were you working on it? What do you mean? Or was it finished before we went to Vegas? I remember no, on that Trips trip was done. Writing. Oh, like, Trips. I remember sitting there and you were like writing like stuff down. That was Psychology yeah. of the Fool. The one that I yeah. wrote in the backseat of the car. That, that was Psychology was, of the Fool? That was Psychology of the Fool. Oh, that's fucking yeah wild. so trips trips and mundane i had before we went to i wrote that night i, I woke up at like uh probably like one or two a.m i was gonna ask you and i just i didn't want to like mess it up I was yeah just like, i'm just gonna let yeah me we were just, <laughs> yeah we we're just chilling yeah yeah that was, a, that was a fun road trip but so you said trips was finished before vegas yeah so and so how well not finished like i didn't mix it yet but it was definitely written and recorded before we went to vegas yeah it's how you were feeling before vegas but was, didn't you have like nas nas bars in there or something like, no, that? like i had the fact that we went to go see nas or something like that no i had nas bars in holding on oh was that what it was in? Okay, and, okay. and holding on was gonna be titled holding on in parentheses after vegas ah uh, okay, but okay, um, yeah, yeah. but I, I don't know why i ended up not doing that but I ended up just leaving it as holding, holding on. Mm. But um, that's crazy. This reminds though. me You're writing this when I was on mushrooms. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, and dude, another thing that's super crazy about that was I, I've never I done write that. I write that two hours before you guys pick me up, and I'm rapping about mushrooms in the song, not even knowing that we were going to trip in Vegas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, it was inspired by the fact that we were going on a trip, and Marco had already called the Beats trips. So the beat was called Trips. We were going on a trip and I was like, oh, let me write a song and then let me relate it back to Trips in this way because I've tripped before. I didn't even think about the fact well, was or know when I made that, that too, we were. So. Yeah, that, that's that's dope. <laughs> that's why I didn't even know that we were going to trip in Vegas. And so that just like that is weird. It was cool. Huh? Uh, but yeah, that one, and, that one and Mundane, I both wrote right before you guys picked us up. Dang, that's crazy. Sure. Um, wait a second. Didn't. Didn't we pick you up at like four in the morning? Yeah, dude. So that's what I said. I woke up at like one, two a.m. Oh and I wrote these songs, God. and then you guys, <laughs> and then oh you guys God. picked me up. Wow, that's <laughs> crazy. Yeah, I was. Well, my sleep schedule was, my sleep schedule was all fucked up at that time. So like, yeah. I was waking up at like two, three a.m. to make music like regularly at that Dang. point. I mean, that's a good way of so I just already productive. No, no other distractions really. It's yeah. two in the morning. You know, a yeah. lot of this album was made. At like two or three in the morning, which fit the vibe of the album. So actually, yeah, I would say so, especially because like the moon's out, it's dark, you know, things like that. Yeah, two or three in the morning, right after I woke up. Not even like I'm dead tired. Like no, I'm wide up. Like I just woke up, but it's just hella late at night. (laughs) But when you when were you going to bed? I would go to bed probably like, I you know I don't know because the medication. So I got diagnosed as schizoaffective recently mm. the medication they give you for that is super sedative 
They so are, I would yeah. just knock the fuck out. Uh. Like, and I'm used to, I'm somebody who's like used to staying up late and stuff. Oh, really? So okay. I would just yeah. knock the fuck out and then wake up at 2 or 3 a.m. and make music. Interesting. What so that's, that makes, that makes sense. And why you like, because you're used to being up late, I guess, maybe. So that's why you'd be like, boom, boom. I just like the vibe of the night, too. Yeah, it's pretty. A night owl, for sure. Cool. It's pretty cool, actually. I think I was just awake from anxiety of having to go to Vegas because my mm-hmm. sleep schedule was also fucked. Yeah. And you were up, too? I was like trying to go to bed at 1 a.m. Knowing you guys were gonna pick me up in three hours. Oh, oh like, shit. There's no way this is happening. Yeah, see, I was probably already up by then. <laughs> like, yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. So that's I was crazy. asleep like the entire car ride. I was out. <laughs> I was in my bed. That's it. <laughs> yeah. But that's funny. Man. So enjoy the game. We'll be right back. Where'd you get that sample from, Marco? Oh. Let's see. I think that was Which which part? The beginning part with the horns. That's I think that's from Yuji uh, Ono. Oh, God. He's the guy that made on the third. He made the, the like, uh, what's it called? Soundtrack for it. But it's not from that. It's from a movie he made mm. called Proof of the Man. Uh, and then, yeah, the Chakaka scream in the middle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so that scream was added by Marco. Perfect, perfect. Yeah, condition. I just thought it fit. I was just like, because I'm going to... Put in another whatever bars of this. I need something to break it up. But I didn't want to just add a bunch of lyrics, so mm. the next best thing is a scream from Chaka Khan. <laughs> and it was perfect. Yeah, no no other thing would have been as perfect, I don't think. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then everything after that is just garage band. Just guitar oh. stuff and whatever. The That's the sick. whole second half interlude, that was just you on garage band <laughs> putting chords together and stuff? Uh, yeah, so those are like some, there's some loops in there, like the strings and um, some of the chorus. Okay. Like the, the choir that you hear in the background. That yeah. was not me. Okay. <laughs> um, Marco. <but> yeah. oh, <laughs> just <laughs> just a couple loops that I threw together. That's and, funny. Yeah. Just made it sound as gospely as possible. Just as like a complete like flip from what you just heard mm-hmm. 10 seconds ago. And that's yeah. what it is too, is a complete flip, I think. Because like first half was all like, uh, uh. You know, especially with the, the screen that comes in. Like, yeah. And then the last half's like, I think that's definitely the we'll be right back aspect of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Super ballad You know? Which is the perfect, I think, almost intermission to the album. It is. Because I didn't change that title at all. Marco had titled that. That was his title. Yeah. Oh, like, no way. Like, Enjoy the beat the was already we'll titled right back. back. I that's got that from a shout out Mythical Kitchen. They're Good Mythical Morning. They're like the, anyways, they had Tom Hanks on. And like one of the, I don't know if you know Last Meals at all. No, I don't think so. Okay, so they there's like a show that they put on where they invite celebrities on to have their last meal. Like, what would you have as your last meal? Okay. And at the end of the show, um, they always tell, like, say your last words right into that camera. And yeah. Tom Hanks was, "We'll be right back." And I, was just, <laughs> I was like, "That's fucking this guy." Oh shit! That's hilarious. Okay. Actually. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, enjoy the game. We'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, I, I think the reason why I liked it was like my routine was like. Make music, stop making music long enough to watch some sports, and then go back to making music. So enjoy the game. We'll be right back. Was like perfect because it's like the game's on. Go enjoy it. Yeah. We'll be right back. Like that's that definitely a back. part of your personality for sure. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So uh, it's an that's intermission. That's why I liked it for sure. That's great. Yeah, and I love the fact that uh, I think you did that in in uh, MKS too, right? Where you just had like an intermission, nothing but beat. Um, not for like the course of a whole track, but there was definitely like. Inter, there was yeah. definitely intermissions on mm. that album, yeah. The Johnny Jazz bit, yeah. Johnny, oh, yeah, Johnny's Jazz, right, Johnny's Jazz, and right. that yeah. is, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So that's cool. That's that, cool I'm that super you, grateful uh, that he don't did stop that. drumming, Johnny. I'm <laughs> super grateful. Shout out to Johnny. I'm super grateful that he not only made that jazz interlude, which is my favorite part of that whole album, maybe, but um, that he mixed the whole thing too, because I did not know how to mm-hmm. mix at the time, and I never would have been able to make that project like on my own. So, yeah, yeah I'm super grateful for that. Yeah, it was. It was really cool. But I love how, because I know that you enjoy jazz, and so it's cool how you incorporate jazz into your, like, your rap, your hip-hop, you know? Um, especially in both albums so far. Like, you've, you've been able to incorporate some type of, like, chill jazz. Um, that's, that's, the love love of, that's the love of Tribe right there. That's Man. That's Tribe Called Quest. Oh, and I loved it. This is such a good album, too. Yeah, that album was, like, such a... back here real quick. <laughs> so, so, Midnight, all these albums relate to Las Sombras in some way or another. I guess we can kind of talk about that. Mm. Al Green, tell me about that. Yeah, so oh, Al Green's Call oh. Me is all about 
heartbreak, basically. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so love some all green too, man. So that basically just kind of fit. Um, and I and I just yeah, it has that soulful like it has kind of a late night vibe. All these sort of have a late night vibe to me, which is why they're here. Um, but yeah, that's that's where the Al Green one comes in. Midnight Marauders because the whole album was made like super late at night. It fit that, and then like you said, it had the jazzy inspo. Mm-hmm. So Midnight Marauders for that. Real sweatshirt sick. I haven't heard this album. So I, I would put Voidir in its place because Voidir is actually the one that I wanted to put there, but I just that vinyl hasn't come it. in yet. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. It should be here in a couple months, but it's not here yet. So I put Sick there in its place. Um, but I talked about why Voidir inspired this album. Okay. Um, Faces by Mac Miller. Another side of this album, another angle of this album was the fact that I was short, like diagnosed with schizoaffective shortly before its creation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, so Faces, Mac Miller talks about, like he has a lot of lines on there where I don't know if he was schizophrenic or schizoaffective or experienced psychosis by means of other ways, but he has lines in there that relate to psychosis. Mm. And like, is the faces thing like a, you know, how like they ask people to do drawings of their face? I think that's part of it. I think there's a lot of different meanings to, to faces when, pretty cool. And okay. it changes like throughout the course of the album, but it's just, a, it's the hallucinations and everything he talks about. It just, it, it fit. So that's mm. why, that's why that one's up there. They're the shadows of the night, dude. But yeah, uh, Magic 2 talks about black magic and stuff like that, which fit with like the witch theme and like the the shadows theme and everything. Um, Crescent, John Coltrane, same way. Mm. And Marco actually said that there's an Alice Coltrane sample on here somewhere, right? It's uh, Dorothy Ashby, but she worked a shit ton with Alice Coltrane okay. and John Coltrane and all of those like old school jazz people. Um, But yeah, there's... I mean, Alice Coltrane's probably in there somewhere, just like as a feature on her album. But yeah, there's there's a lot of ins- draw from all these people, <laughs> all yeah. these people. Dude. Yeah, that's wild. And then L. Mike, L. Michael's affair and Black Thought. Just I was just listening to that album a bunch, so that's why it's there. <laughs> but yeah, solid albums, all of them. Yeah. Uh, from a past life, where'd you get that sample from? From a past life. I think that's a uh, Pomoja. I think that's how you pronounce it. Pomoja. The original beat was Pamela. It was called Pamela, but that yeah. was just to play on Pomoja. It was just like Pam. The first okay. time I did it, I was just like maybe just Pam, and then I just did Pamela just to fit the theme of having something attached to it. Mm. Um, yeah, the song is called Ooh Baby. You lose a lot of <laughs> that's what it's called I don't know <laughs> it's just called Ooh Baby <laughs> yeah. uh, that was perfect because I didn't have to write a hook because that was the hook. like that was <laughs> I was like this is perfect <laughs> also yeah. 70s 80s somewhere somewhere back there the only song I know by them yeah I I liked that one because I have a feeling I don't know for sure but I have a feeling that's like one of the older beats that you have on that made yeah, it on here that thing was mixed awfully dude yeah <laughs> but I liked that because I like that song, like, from a past, like, the idea of it being old and, like, in the past or, like, oh, traveling shit. through time. Like, this song came through time to get to here. To get put here. Like, I liked the rustic sound of it, kind of. So, that's okay. pretty cool. Yeah. Did you have to remix it, like, a bunch? I didn't, to, like... I didn't touch the beat. Okay. I made my vocals sound as... I made my vocals sound as rusty as the beat. Or I tried to. Oh, damn. Okay. Give it some texture. I appreciate that, for sure. <laughs> I think... From an artist's perspective, but also... Whenever I hear some of my beats, I'm just like, man, I wish I could go back and remaster them or something. Yeah, I know what you mean, but in a way, I think I think it worked from a past life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. man. I thought that was my uh, because I I, I was saying earlier how uh, it's like all like a punch in, you know, there's like all these different like short stories almost, you know, Mm -hmm. I think from a past life was my favorite story that was told. Um just because, like, it was really good. And, and weren't you saying that it was it was another one that was, like, personal to, to you and Allie? Or yeah, so, essentially, mm. yeah, it just, it's kind of a continuation of, like, the soulmates concept, but it's, like, it's, it's the opposite. Like, soulmates, I'm struggling with wanting to leave mm-hmm. from a past life is, like, a point of, like, remembering why I'm here. Yeah. If right. That makes sense. Yeah. Which is great because it also pr- like shows the evolution of the album too. Like from going from like what choice do I make, <laughs> yeah, you know, where do I go now to 
and then the realization i miss you and i'll miss you again yeah like you realize that from your past life the that whole stretch from from a past life to shadows of the night it's they kind of like flow together so it's like yeah yeah like it goes into i miss you i'll miss you again like you said and then um mundane was originally called life without you interlude Mm. so that's what i had originally called it before i ended up changing it to mundane because i liked the monday and mundane wordplay that i was okay okay yeah um but it was originally called Life Without You. So it was like, I missed you and I missed you again. It was like me kind of making the realization that this is a bad decision. Mm-hmm. And then mon- mundane, or as it was called, Life Without You at the time, was just, that was my life at the moment. Be, like, having made the wrong decision. Right, okay. And so it was just mundane. It was boring. It's just whatever. I see. And then Shadows of the Night was like the reuniting. And like, if that makes sense. Mm. So yeah, so that was In like the, the <laughs> Well, that was that was the funny part, right? Was like I wanted it to sound like, yeah, yeah. I, I yeah, wanted yeah. it, yeah. I know what you mean. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if it, if it makes sense, but it makes sense to me. So that's all that matters. Yeah, it's really cool, actually. I liked that title too. Um, I missed you. I missed you, and I'll miss you again. Like, there's just something about that title that's just like, yeah, like that. That really hits in, on some level, you know. Like, I think that's a great title. It, it was a double entendre too, because the idea. Of, presented in from a past life of this is somebody who i maybe like had a life with in a previous lifetime right Mm -hmm. that idea being presented i miss you and i'll miss you again is taking place at the time of separation right Mm -hmm. so it's like this idea of like oh i missed you in that past life i don't like i'm i'm gonna end up missing you again in this life Mm. like missing you as in like going our separate ways like miss what was supposed to happen if that right yep so it's a little bit of a double entendre in that way too interesting and that's cool that that, uh, like you said, that they're all connected. Yeah, there's like little interconnects inside of the big connect. I, lo- I love uh, nuances and stuff, bro. Mm. Like I'm obsessed with like that stuff in albums. Like that's what makes me obsessively listen to albums over and over again is the fact that I can find connections and like, and maybe it's schizophrenic, but like that, hey. that's what I love about it. You like, know, whatever. they're callbacks, literally. Whoa, that's what I think. At least that's pretty cool, actually. Like it, yeah, yeah, yeah. Call back, yeah. And then mundane is the only one on here without a sample. What? Yeah, that one's just exclusively through GarageBand, no sample. Originally titled "Rough Ghosts," which is how I started the verse. Man, I got some rough ghosts, and they always follow me. Oh. So Marco's titling of the beat again, inspiring the lyrics as as per usual. Did you do that with like a lot of these songs? Like, did you just like base like? The direction you were gonna take in based off of the name dude your names like kind of lay the blueprint most of the time oh, like even um actually not for all of them on the last album but even for some of them on the last album like ascension like the reason why i went the direction i did on that one was because of what you named it like I forgot what i named it just ascension oh fuck okay. yeah that yeah, makes sense um I think you're gonna have to bleep me out, dude. I keep cursing and I don't want to. D- you, you're good, dude. I'm it, I'm not bleeping nothing, Marco. So your your curse words are in this the is, video. Right, this right. is a safe space. Yeah, this is a safe a safe, safe space. space. Family friendly content. <laughs> um, I do want to say on the pod, the car driving by at the end of mundane was literally a car driving by, but it just fit perfectly with the damn it's monday ain't it and then the car drives by like it's monday morning like damn you're back to the routine again uh, like it really well yeah so i did i just did want to mention that like that wasn't even something i added like that was just yeah somebody drove by literally as i recorded it well and that's funny that you say that too because i actually like loved the the bars in that song too and so it's funny that uh you incorporated like different ideas into that you know i mean that's not actually a bar in the song more of like an idea you know mm-hmm. but uh but I just think that's cool. Like I thought the bars in that were super great, especially for it being like a like an interlude. Yeah, you know. I keep reading the track list just over and over, and then I'm realizing like even the like the names in and of itself is like a story. Yeah, I, yeah. Like it's literally like you said. It's like it like lays a blueprint for like the experience you were going through. Literally. Mm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, dude. Definitely. Which is really interesting that um you take your route based off of what his titles are because like that's crazy how uh and i mean clearly as we've seen i think this whole 
this whole day <laughs> like you two like come full circle a lot with with that type of stuff and so it's really interesting that uh like this yeah has told the story that it's told mm -hmm. by you but inspired by him and him not knowing that what it was supposed to be or anything like that yeah. you know like that's like just that's pretty crazy intervention dude yeah like that's pretty crazy up. it's yeah. i don't know i couldn't make a rap album at the time but i could make beats and you could rap your ass off and but i couldn't make beats so was, <laughs> yeah even now when i try to make a beat it is terrible <laughs> sampling it helps breathe. it's all just what's it called inspiration yeah that was the word i was looking for mm. hell yeah sick dude shadows of the night um i was originally gonna leave it so marco had the beat titled shadows of the night in japanese from the because the person he got it the sample from was japanese yeah um and so the the plan was the album was going to be the album title was going to be in spanish the whole album was going to be in english and then the lead single was going to be in, it was going to be a japanese title so like <laughs> it would have been so confusing it would have so been so ends. confusing but i liked the idea of the confusion right uh. but um i don't i I think what made me end up changing it to English Shadows of the Night was I didn't want them to come get us for the sample. <laughs> I don't think they would. I don't think they would either, but I just didn't want to risk it, and I felt like putting it up in Japanese there might be a more of a likelihood of them finding it, and I just didn't want to get got. That's so <laughs> I, I literally did that one like almost as a test because even the album that I put on my SoundCloud is the album uh -huh. cover. Yeah. Oh really? Used, oh okay. I named it in Japanese like they did. And nothing no happened? Yeah. Oh, so we probably would have been fine then. Not only that, but they, it's like one of the only songs that I've had on there uh, with samples that hasn't been taken down immediately. Mm. And then they put it back up. Mm. Shout out Japan, dude. Man. Let us use your samples. I appreciate it. Yeah, for real. For real. Shout out Japan. <laughs> Some of Marco's best samples come from Japan. So, And you know what's cool too about, um, or what I thought was cool about Shadows of the Night is it almost kind of gave me a... Uh, like an outcast type of vibe. Oh, that's it. Like, like with you rapping on it, I could also hear Big Boy like coming in, you know, right after you and just like Ugh, saucing it up real quick. That's and then sick. Andre like laying one of those poppy hooks and stuff. Like, I thought it was really cool actually. Um, gave me, gave me a southern, really southern Georgia, or is, is it Atlanta, South, southern Georgia? Uh, gave me an Atlanta. I think so. Vibe. Yeah. Oh, Hell yeah. Nice. Cool. Atlanta vibe. Hell yeah. yeah, that's dope. Yeah, I wanted I that one. Yeah, definitely. When he when you said big boy, I was like, yeah, I can see that for sure. Um, what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, I wanted uh, this one to like when I'm this one like I wanted it to be poppy because I wanted to practice mixing poppier stuff. Mm. So this one has like hella vocal layers and all the all the songs I mixed vocal layers and put them in the back. But this one, there's hella like like there's a ton of them and it's because I wanted it to sound like full clubby like and so i was super proud of this mix it's not like perfect and you obviously can get like better stuff from you know better equipment than when i'm mi mixing on or whatever right, yeah, or yeah. just even just having done it longer like i just started mixing but i was definitely super proud of that mix mm. so it is a club banger should have named it club banger <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is that is a good one shadows that end night dang that would have been cool though that's funny that you that you said uh you were gonna put it in the japanese Cause that I didn't even think about that like Spanish title, mm -hmm. and then everything's in English, and then to have a, a Japanese lead like that's really that's funny. Yeah, and part of the reason I ended up going with a Spanish title was because of um, Earl Sweatshirt you, like calling Voidir Voidir. So like yeah. I liked the fact that he used another language because I could have just called it Shadows of the Night, but I liked the idea of using another language. You mean the album itself? Like calling it that Shadows of the Night? Or the sh yeah, the Shadows of the Night or the Shadows or it, okay. it, it went through a couple different titles. It was at one point like, like at one point it was La Sombras de la Noche. At one point it was, then okay. it just ended up being this. Um, but then I also like, because the album was very feminine throughout, it I liked that same. Las Sombras. Yeah, same. <laughs> I liked that Las Sombras was, was feminine because uh, in, in Spanish you have masculine and feminine words. Right. Mm -hmm. And so... I like well, I mean, that. That's, yeah, you're talking about stuff that isn't masculine to talk about. Exactly. You know what I mean? So, and I ju I just thought it was interesting that like I'm talking about shadows, which essentially is just let's be real, essentially just ex girlfriends fucking up future relationships <laughs> for you, right? Yeah. Which is, yep. Mm -hmm. So the fact that the shadows in Spanish was feminine was cool to me. Yeah. 
seeing. See, I love I love uh, being able to just sit down and talk about these things because it, it gives me a whole new like perspective on on everything. You know, it's I great. I really love it. I want to do this for like all of our releases, a little makings of. It just documents every luminous release. Like, right. It, oh yeah. Be cool. The thought uh, thought process behind it. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Kenny for providing a platform. <laughs> Yeah, for a sure. 66 subscriber, tiny platform, but hey, a platform nonetheless. Shout out, uh, Kenny, 66 su- subscribers. Jesus yes. Shout out to shout you, out. 66 times, baby. Anybody who likes it, 67. Yeah, make it 67 right now. <laughs> Follow. Anybody who likes the comments. Yeah, let's shout get some out. sponsors on this pod. Mm. 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 Dude, mm. 80% of the people who watch my videos aren't subscribed. So aren't. if all those people subscribed, we'd probably... Yeah, aren't. So if all those people subscribed, we'd probably have... Don't forget to like and click that bell. Ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> and the 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 little thing that looks like this. The, the like the button. thumbs up. Yeah. Yes, please. Uh, you you know what it was. I was making you think about it. So that way you click it. Share it with your friends and family. <laughs> Word of mouth goes a long way. All it, does. That. it really does. Holding on. Bro. <gasps> Is that a Beatles sample or a John Lennon sample? Shout out John Lennon. John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's just... Uh, his, he has a song called Holding On. And it's just John Lennon, though? It's, it's not? Just John okay, Lennon, okay. Yeah. I couldn't remember if it was a Beatles song or if it was just Lennon. I think it's a like a love song to Yoko Ono. Oh, interesting. In the song, he's like, hold on, Yoko. Yoko, hold on. Mm. It's going to be all right. Whoa, that's interesting because I didn't know it was a love song sample. And it made its way onto this album. That's interesting. Yeah. But I don't, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that's... I think it is about Yoko Ono, which fits well with the overall theme of the whole right. album. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, in this one, uh, I'm kind of tied between this one and another one, but uh, probably like my number one song on oh, the whole album. Oh, for real? Yeah. That's dope because this was kind of, this was very freestyle-y. Really? It wasn't, I'm not going to act like some of these bars weren't like written or that I didn't retake this take but mm. like it, this was like way more freestyle than the other songs really yeah that's so that's cool yeah it's it's uh it's between holding on and you still flowed really well yeah that's what i'm saying like it's it's literally tied for number one between that and uh crescent eclipse oh wow okay yeah cool see that's dope man everybody has told me a different song as their favorite so that that shit's cool mm. I loved I loved holding on a whole lot. That was a great one. So I'm glad that it's up there. It's got a little star next to it, you oh, know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's probably why actually. It's probably my fault maybe cuz I know I I be <laughs> it be popping up on my phone a lot. That's for sure. <laughs> that's cool though. That's fun. Yeah, that one was going to originally be in parentheses after Vegas. And you can you can tell the like trips is kind of depressing in nature mm-hmm. and then holding on is much more upbeat and positive in nature. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So it was like this the is flip side the of that. Before the trip to Vegas, after the trip to Vegas. Yeah. But so I, I'm still thinking about going in and changing the title. But I had asked Ali, I was like, what title do you think is the best? She's like, I like holding on. So I was like, okay, I'll go with that one. Mm. But yeah. If you do that, you're going to uh, change Shadows of the Night too. To, be, to the Japanese yeah. one. I might, <laughs> actually, I might. Dude, can you imagine if our Japanese audience went through the roof after that? Dude. That would be that would be sick. That would be, <laughs> that really would be cool. super sick. That would be really cool, actually. Uh, and then we're into the last two, which my intention was to thematically try to wrap up as best as I can, but I still wanted to keep the vagueness and, and the mystique, and I still wanted to be brief about it because um, everything up to that point was brief. But I did extend. Um, so sleep paralysis, I think, was already two minutes, but most of the beats on here were like one under two minutes. So Crescent Eclipse, I did extend the Shout beat. Shout out that diesel truck. Yeah. <laughs> so Crescent Eclipse, I did end up extending the beat because I couldn't, I couldn't fit everything I wanted to say in the one, one and a half minute. Uh, um, yeah. But still, two and a half is pretty brief, brief, I would say. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You said you wanted to leave it vague, but I thought it was like a solid ending. Like I thought those last two tied in to like make it a solid ending, mm-hmm. which is weird that, or not weird, I guess, but it's interesting that you said that it's a... Um, like you were trying to leave it vague, yeah. Because well, I thought it was a solid like, conclusion. I wanted it to make it so that everything before it would make like a little bit more sense, mm-hmm. but I still didn't want to like. Oh, here's everything I was saying. Like you know what yeah. I mean. Like I didn't want to just like hold the listener's hand. Like if they want to go back and listen to this multiple times and and figure it out, then like 
I would you prefer should. that than like me just like explaining Reinstating it. Reinstating everything you just talked about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I understand. I mean, and plus, I mean, I guess it could be treated as like an essay, you know, where you like summarize everything at the end of it, you know, but like. What's up, essay? <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Shout out my essays. Like, I, th- <laughs> <laughs> I think, um, I think the story was amazing, like. From start to finish, you know, that's, and I think that's why Crescent Eclipse is a uh, tied for number one, just because like I love the ending of the album, like I love the way that you finished it out. Um, the mood was great, like it was, it was amazing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and shout out uh, to my homie Carlos because he said that that was one of his favorites because uh, it was like super nostalgic for him. Mm. So that was cool. That's what's up. Shout out my essays, uh, Marco. Where did you get the samples for both of those? Uh, sleep paralysis. That was um, fuck. Uh, Will I see you again? By the uh, the Sacred Souls. Okay. Which is Sacred like, Souls are dope. Yeah, they're like a a new band that yeah. sounds old school as fuck. Yeah, Ooh. they're super sick. Their first album was released in 2022, mm-hmm. which is crazy to me because it sounds like it was released like 50 years ago. Yeah. Ew. No, they make like a super soulful like. What? Yeah, it's I don't know if it's like in their recording. It's probably in everything. Like how they record it, they probably. It sounds like they record it in analog. Like it's not, it has yeah. that 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 rusty. Uh, rusty is a bad word for it, but yeah, it but has that kind of vibe. It's like okay, a warm yeah. tone. Yeah, it doesn't sound like super clean cut mm-hmm. or sounds, digital. It doesn't yeah. sound digital. Yeah, interesting. Which I love that. If yeah. sometimes when I sample stuff, like I won't even. I'll add like vinyl crackling in the background just yeah. to add to the mood of it. I love that. I love that stuff. Do you think that they actually recorded on film? vinyl and stuff? That would be crazy. If they still did that route, it would like make everything. That's what um, that's what Kendrick did for Depemba Butterfly. They per- okay. they purposely recorded that album in analog because he wanted it to sound like all the sounds they were pulling from, like the that stuff from the seventies and sixties and stuff. So yeah, he purposely. That's an example of somebody in modern times doing it. That's sure. sick. Yeah, because with that, you can't go back and edit stuff. Mm-hmm. Once, once you're out of recording film yep, or whatever that's, it's that's called, it. yep. you got to destroy that, start again. Yep. Yep. Or and if that, you mess up a take, you yeah, know, like you, yeah. can't, you can't just delete it and try again, you mm-hmm. know? And the album is all live instrumentation, so it just fits perfect with an analog sound, too. Dang. So. Is anything... I haven't, like, researched to Pimp a Butterfly, but I'm sure there are probably some samples. There Unless is he's, no is he just like with a live band the whole time. No, there is samples, but they replay a lot of them. So like, like on I, I samples that lady by the Isley Brothers. Yeah, who's that lady? Who's that lady? That's sampled on I. What? But they replayed it with a live guitar. They didn't just pull the sample. Oh, okay, that's yeah, that's genius. Yeah, genius, dude. Because hmm. that. They can one hundred percent just say that yeah no that was us. Well, they Sounds still they like still them, credited so they still credited the Isley Brothers sample and they even got Ronald Isley to come on the song for the album version. Like at oh, the end, okay. he introduces Kendrick and says like the greatest rapper alive, Kendrick Lamar. Like they got Ronald Isley in that one version. I think it's like in the beginning, no, when he's like gathering the masses. Yeah, that's the album version. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's yeah. the one I've heard. Yeah, that's Ronald Isley at the beginning Wait, introducing him. What? No way. Yeah, and Ronald that's Isley is on that. How Much a Dollar Cost too. He's, he sings at, at the, the end, end of How Much a Dollar Cost, yeah. Oh, oh that's right. Yeah. I want my friend. What more do you want from me? That's him. Yeah. That's him. Yeah, yep. okay, okay. That's yep. insane. I'm surprised that's I never him. thought about that. Yes, sir. Dude, shout out to the Isley Brothers. Fun fact, yeah. Prin- Prince was supposed to be on uh, Complexion on that album, too. No way. Yeah, but he passed away before they actually, like, say. yeah. That's crazy, because um, he's not even credited, like, in the song. If you look up the songs, mm-hmm. Sir Isley, he's not... Seriously. Credited at all? He's a, his feature shows up on Apple Music on how much a dollar cost. What? Okay. Yeah. I just got to get Apple does, Music. Huh? I've just always, uh, I've just always like, it's just after James Fauntleroy and James Fauntleroy has like a hell of a long name, so I feel like you have to sit there and watch it scroll James till it gets Font- to Ronald uh, Isley. Uh, I see. <laughs> so on Spotify, it's for sure not there. I could tell you that. Yeah. It's just Kendrick. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. That's yeah. wild. Man, that's pretty crazy, actually. And then Crescent, oh, Crescent Eclipse was Dorothy Ashby. And you, it, her song with, was called Windmills something, yeah. right? What was it called? Uh, Windmills of the Mind. Uh, it's old. It's super. She's, s- she's just a harp player. Yeah, so. Harp? Not yeah, that's harp. harp player. She's the harp player. Oh. Yeah, that shit is so sick. I oh. didn't know it was harp until you told me. Yeah. And I was like, that sh- I knew it was strings, obviously, but. Mm-hmm. 
I didn't know it was a harp specifically, and yeah. I was like, that that's fucking sick. Huh. She's the harp player. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know who it is now. I don't. I hope she's still with us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she worked with uh, Alice Coltrane, John Coltrane. Shout out. Yep. Shout out, Jonathan. <laughs> um. But yeah, that's sick. Super sick. Um. There was something I was gonna say, and I completely blanked on it just now. But I have a question, actually. Is there a reason that you dropped on December 29th specifically? Or so I assumed it had earlier something to this do with year. The new year. What's up? I, I assumed it had something to do with just like the transition to the new year. Uh, I didn't so. think about that, but that definitely is one way to interpret it that okay. I'm cool with. That's for how sure. I interpret it. Um, <laughs> that's that's pretty sick. Um, but the reason for it was so I had a I had a dream <laughs> that I would like that I I was capable of dropping two pro- like after I put out the first project this year I was like you know what like if I learn like I, I could definitely write projects fast enough to get two projects out every year mm-hmm. but then Legacy and so we shot them down the two the two other projects I'm working on they were coming along much slower and I didn't know how to mix and everything so it was seeming like I couldn't wasn't going to be able to get a second project out this year so then I just started aiming for well I'm going to get those out later and I'm going to try to put out a project at the top of 2024 um, and I'll just focus on that instead because I'm not going to be able to make the deadline of the end of 2023 Gotcha. but then I was like I started making songs to practice mixing and then I was low key kind of fucking with the mixes I didn't think they sounded that bad and then I made the idea to just go with the full album, made the full mm-hmm. album. And then once it was done, I was like, well, shit, there's still a whole you need. You usually have to upload a project four weeks before it comes out on DistroKid. Mm. So I was like, I still have a whole month before the end of the year. And four Fridays from now is the last Friday of the year. So I just, just did it. Yeah. And then yeah. I was like, and then it, and then it felt cool because I didn't expect it. But I ended up fulfilling my goal of two projects Cause I want to do two yeah, projects yeah. every year until we pop, right? <laughs> so, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. so I did two projects this year, and then I have two projects slated for next year, and I feel like I'm getting better at mixing every day. So, That's what's it, it was it was cool because it was like, oh shit, I fulfilled that goal, and I I didn't even I gave up on that goal, but I still ended up fulfilling it. Doing it yeah, yeah, which is really cool actually. Whether you like it or not, dude, you're gonna accomplish your goal. So, God said, you said <clears throat> second project, and it's and it happened out of nowhere, like like. October, start of October, no plans, no no even inkling of this album. And then fast forward to first week of December yeah. and, it's, and it's finished. That's right, because I remember your process for this was super quick. Like, I remember you were just going through it. I think, yeah, I think within we a like, week oh, of crap. asking me, you, were, you already sent, like, the track list. Like, this is what it's going to be. Within, like, a week of asking, just being like, can I? Yeah, dude. I think <laughs> it, in its entirety, from writing to mixing, I think it took probably two months in total to make. Yeah, it's crazy. It happened. So I just got hyper focused. Like once I made the decision, this is what I'm doing. I got hyper focused on it, and then it was just every day. This was what I was doing. So, which is good. We we need more of that. Which means I need more of the Addies. And I was kind <laughs> of. I'm I'm at a job now where like I I get a lot of. And I hadn't I hadn't been full fledged like. I guess I kind of was doing the podcast at the time, wasn't I? But I don't know. I just felt like this was all I was doing. Mm. Yeah. Which I'm glad you did, dude. This and watching sports. Dude, that's, that's pretty much what my life was during the making of this. But yeah. Shout out to Sportscast. <laughs> Shout out Biggest Little Sportscast. Um, I get, Do you guys have anything else you wanted to say about the album before we wrap it up? Mm. About the album itself. It's or a great album all the way throughout. Psychology of the Fool. Best song, underrated song. It's not on top. Best song. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's all. I'm glad you made it. Hell yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that uh, that this exists, that it's out there in the world. Um, it was it was a really dope project. I'm excited to see what comes what comes next. Yeah. Hell yeah. The other two albums that you have, do you have like a specific time of when you want to release those throughout the year? Yeah. So one of them, I need to finish it by the end of May because it has to come out mid-June. Okay. Because it's dropping in line with something else that is supposed to be happening in mid-June. It might not happen 
If it doesn't happen, I'm still going to drop the album at that time anyway. Okay. But, and I feel very confident that it is going to happen. If it does happen, it's supposed to be dropping in line with that thing. So it has, that can one has to talk about true. it yet. I, uh, nah, I can't talk don't. about it on the podcast. I can tell you guys. Okay. Hell yeah. But I, I don't see footage. Keep mm. stay tuned. <laughs> But yeah, so that one that one has to come out in June, and so we shot them down. Um, I'm just thinking like it, it's a very fall feeling album, so I'm just thinking sometime in fall next year, okay. or I guess this year now. Goddamn, yeah, gotta, gotta get cracking, bro. Gotta get rolling, man. But yeah, yeah, I felt that though. <laughs> Trying to drop like five projects this year. Hell yeah, I'm excited for it, dude. This is the year that Luminous really kicks off everything, in my mm-hmm. opinion. This is where this is the year where we all get projects out. We all just if we already have projects out, keep putting out more. And then I was going to try to release one by my birthday, but I didn't know the four week thing. So it's probably going to come out a lot yeah. later than that. When's and your birthday, Marco? Uh, February 28th. I had to think about it for too long. And <laughs> is the album done already? No. Is it close to being done? It's, it's like there. I just have to go back and look at it and stuff. I was like, if you just need it mixed, I can I could probably mix the whole thing for you in like three or four days, and we can get that shit out. <laughs> Holy fuck, maybe. That's should, what, should I tease that? No, <laughs> no. I'm not confident it'll come out in that time, so I can't. You can upload it. Um, like, like when I wake up, I ended up uploading for like the next day after we put it up, and it ended up working. Um, so you can upload it before then, but for albums, it just says if you, if you upload it like two weeks before it says, Oh, because you're not uploading it four weeks before we can't guarantee that it's going to go live everywhere at this time. But usually from what I've seen, it does. So you can, you can do it within four weeks. I just like to make sure I'm doing it four weeks just to make sure it comes out when I want it to. Yeah. I think, I think there was one time it was my first single that I released, um, G shit. Yeah, it was my first single on, like, major Jeez. platforms and stuff. Um, and I I think I did that. I put it out for, like, two days or something like that. Because, it, you know, it does recommend, like, you know, a couple weeks out or something. But I was like, fuck it. Let's just drop it. Um, so I think I put it out for, like, two or three days or something like that. And then on the day it was supposed to come out, it was out on Apple Music. But it wasn't out on Spotify. Okay. And, like, things like And so it was, like, really weird. And then it took a couple hours extra i think it was like eight to 12 hours extra can you put a schedule on, on it like to say like when you want it to release mm-hmm. yeah, well, yeah yeah that's that's what you do but if your schedule is within four weeks it's going to give you a prompt that says we can't guarantee this release is going to be perfect right. but okay. if you do it before four weeks they can guarantee it'll be up every store title apple spotify i'll mm-hmm. be up on the same time exactly when you want it to like they can guarantee that if you do it before four weeks if oh, you do shit. it within that four weeks timeline it usually will be okay. They'll usually still go up when you want it to, but they just, because of all the checks and every streaming service is different with the checks they go through, mm-hmm. it could be different. Okay. Might as well just uh, to look into it. give sure. it like two months or something like that, you know? I just yeah. give it four weeks. That, that's what I did for both of them and it worked mm-hmm. out fine. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because they, they tell you four weeks. They tell you like four weeks is like the time span. So. Well, and I wonder if like the lyrics issue and um, like things like that, also play a part in like the scheduling yeah like i wonder if you do you think maybe if i had scheduled it for farther out we wouldn't be dealing with that see and that's my question is like maybe i don't know if i don't know if that would because you said uh your first one went like super smooth but the first one we had we had it uploaded like probably like a month and a half before it was supposed to come out oh okay whereas this one was the four week mark this one was I think I think it was slightly under four weeks. I think it was like twenty seven days or something. Oh. So I wonder. But that, I don't think but it, it, I would think it would be up by now though. I don't know. Right. I'll, it would I'll just like delay out. a little bit. I don't know. So I'll talk to somebody. Let's get. We want to get Marco's profile attached to it first, yeah. and then I can start complaining <laughs> to Apple about the credits and shit. Because like. As of right now, like if we if we complain to them and they fix it and then we go and edit shit and then yeah they're gonna be like what the hell yeah yeah well I'm gonna wait on that because I just I released that beat that I did and then once that goes live onto all the platforms and stuff I'll be able to see for sure like okay now I have a profile that I can link to everything okay cool. that isn't just a random Marco out there yeah <laughs> mm. shout oh, out yeah. that random Marco. Our one of our songs is number four on your top songs. That's so <laughs> funny, <dude. laughs> That's hella funny. That's that's wild. <laughs> He's like, yo, <laughs> fire. 
He's like, I didn't know I made this, but hell yeah. <laughs> Doesn't even sound anything like him. <laughs> <laughs> like, shout, uh, help support Marco. Not not random Marco. We love random Marco, but, you know, Marco, su- yeah. support Marco, Marco. Marco okay, it's my own fault. I don't have anything set up. It'll be all right. It's all good. Yeah. It'll be it. It'll get all sorted out. Yeah, we're gonna get it. Oh, especially if we get those like little bracelets. Those little, what was the oh, dots? Those little yeah, dot the things. Dot things. I was if I could be tell people I have an album, psh, and then it takes them right to Boom, it. Boom! And all they have to do is pull out their nice. what was it? Their phone. Just like pull yeah. out your phone, put it on top, mm-hmm. and then it just like it's throws like it up there. Yeah, it's like the tap thing. I think iPhones have that. Like if you share contacts, you can just do that by like yeah. tapping phones mm-hmm. together and stuff. Mm. I think it works that way. Mm. You can share Wi-Fi passwords like that too. Right. Okay. See, so we should definitely get those. Be like, hey, you know, I got a new album out, right? Oh, <laughs> actually, that'd be it's a fucking uh, genius. I didn't even think about it. Like, it's time to check it out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I thought it was just like social networking stuff, but yeah, if you can put your album on there and stuff, right? Because I think I think it's you could just do an artist page, right? So if you just link like, it to like your artist page, and then that ha- that takes you, or it'd be like a main hub or something like y- that. Yeah, you know how I did like the hyperlink for the album, and like you click the one link, but it it directs you to there's a link for apple music spotify title youtube like all anywhere you can find the album yeah you we could just have it linked to a hyperlink and right. then whatever streaming service they use they just click that one mm. not sponsored by dot right but maybe <laughs> we shouldn't future? have said their name man <laughs> we're not sponsored yet <laughs> for real we no, their name only sponsor us though dot sponsor us yeah Anybody who wants to sponsor us. William Hill Sportsbook, sponsor me. <laughs> Especially on BLS. I'll oh. do spread picks for you every fucking week. Sponsor me. Sports Illustrated, the Reno Gazette Journal, all of them. Ooh, let's go Reno Gazette. Okay, okay. That'd be wild. Kid Native has a bar about you. So <laughs> really? The Reno Gazette. Yeah, uh, you could read about the kid in Reno Gazette. That's in um, For a Few Summers. Has, That's ha- with me and him. Has he actually been in Reno Gazette? Probably. Um, maybe, maybe he has, but, um, the way he wrote that line was like, he popped somebody. That's why he was in there. Oh, no, no, no. (laughs) Uh, I'm pretty sure just for like, in my head at least, (laughs) yeah, in my head at least, uh, I was thinking about how, like, maybe you're just like doing some good or something like that. Like you're just, you know, you're on the. I'm Newspaper over here thinking he's know. fucking shooting people, oh, and in no. reality, he's doing charity oh, work. Yeah, right. Because yeah, that's not the vibe for for a few summers. No, it's not at either. all. Yeah, it's not at all. That one, that one's like super chill and stuff. That's the so one where you guys uh, did the music video in the woods. Yeah, that's right in the forest. That never came out. I know. I was just thinking about that the other day, actually. The um, Donner. But we went to Tunnels, right? Hunter, Hunter, Hunter Creek, Hunter Creek Trail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, up in Northwest Reno. Yep. Yep. Um. Yeah, went to Hunter Creek. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we were making the video or editing the video, and for some reason it was like glitching. It was like getting really scratchy and cutty and stuff. That I don't think that his computer. Oh, actually, you know what? It might have been. It might have been the whole 4K issue. We probably recorded in too high of a resolution. Resolution, mm-hmm. and then now trying to process it all and like edit it and stuff it's like not working and so this podcast stopped half an hour ago (laughs) i don't i don't think it did because uh when i've 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 never run into that problem until i tried to do 4k Mm. okay and for whatever reason that day was the first day i tried to do it Mm. i don't know why they don't just like give you like a notification or like a little ding to tell you that it stopped recorded right oh you know what i could do we went for so long you know what I could do? I could mirror, instead of mirroring this, I could mirror my phone there, and then we can not only see ourselves, but if that happens, we could see it. That'd be sick, actually. Or like, or half do like a split. It. Yeah. 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 That'd be pretty cool. That's the next upgrade, baby. Slowly but surely getting better. If you I have, have an old TV I can give you, just as a second monitor. Oh, that would be sick, actually. Yeah, I'd probably just pop TV it right, right there. Right here. Well, no, that shit doesn't work. That's, mm. yeah. Okay. We have to throw that away. Okay. Well, somebody we'll claim, somebody claims they can fix it, but they haven't come to pick it up yet. Yeah. It doesn't. Well, let me know if help. they fix yeah. it. If not, I I got an extra TV. For sure, <laughs> for sure. That's what's up. All right, plugs real quick. Um, go peep Las Sombras. Obviously, ooh, anywhere ooh. that you listen to music, it's on title. It's on Spotify, Apple, YouTube. If you're a broke bitch and only got YouTube, it's on YouTube. <laughs> go listen everywhere SoundCloud? and anywhere. It's not on SoundCloud, ooh, but we should shit. put it on SoundCloud. Um, La Sombras. But anywhere other than SoundCloud, you can you can <laughs> listen to this album. Go check it out, and La then Sombras. go check out MKS, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Michael That's Kenneth Smith, everywhere. an yes. album that dropped earlier last year that I put out. Beautiful album. Um, go check out uh, the biggest little sports cast. 
sports YouTube channel that I run. Yep. Uh, links for everything will be in the description below. Go check out Loose T. Do you want me to link? I'm gonna link your TikTok and your Instagram, and then do you want yeah, me? To, yeah, yeah. Do you want me to link? Do you have a Distro Kid like hyperlink? Um, no, or, because I only had the one song G shit on there. Yeah, and then um later I I realized that uh. I didn't really like that song a whole lot, so I took it down. So okay. now I don't have a link to shit in, in the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, honestly, I've been considering putting it back up because, um, because I don't think that you can really uh mess with history like that, especially as an artist. You know, okay, like like whatever you recorded at that certain point in time, like that's how you were, that's how you were feeling at that certain point in time. You know, like you shouldn't you shouldn't go back later and be like, mm -hmm. it's from a past life, right? You know, you know, True. unless unless it's super. Uh, controversial or like like you know some something super crazy but mm -hmm. um i think it'd be super messed up because a lot of my friends really like g shit yeah. so i felt i felt kind of selfish for like taking it down oh, you know? okay. i don't even okay. i don't even know if they know i don't even know if they notice that it's gone but <laughs> <laughs> but once it gets released we'll link it in the thing straight up well you yeah, we'll put it back up but yeah. i mean the reasons you had for taking it down like it's valid reasoning cuz like the stuff you were telling me about it like yeah it was just uh it seemed Demonic seemed, uh, is what you said. Yeah, it seemed like there were some some demons in my in my oh, soul no. at the time, you know. Um, hey man, sometimes you gotta let the demons out. You know, this and I was exercising demons straight sure. up. Oh yeah, and and plus, can't let it we've eat grown at you a lot. from the inside. Yeah, we've grown a lot, and so I think it'd be cool just to have that there to show people that we've like grown a lot since since that point, you know. Okay. Yeah. Well, if you get a distro kid hyperlink, send it my way. Mm -hmm. That will also be in the description next to his Instagram and his TikTok. See DJ Atlas. Right, legendary DJ book him, book him and Amplified Entertainment. If you need somebody to do your wedding, your party, right. whatever the fuck, book. if you just need a DJ, book DJ Atlas, book right. DJ Atlas, everything too. One stop shop, baby. Just go to the website, amplifiedent.com, and then of course, it'll be right here. Luminous Records, editor, loose tea. You have editors yet? No, <laughs> I'm, I'm, the, I'm the editor, <laughs> I, I do all I, so. Kenny, <laughs> yeah, there right, you go. <laughs> uh, Kenny and Mouse. then. Links will also be in the description for Marco's Instagram and for Marco's... Do you want me to link your SoundCloud? Oh, no, you can't find me anywhere. Okay, you can't find Marco anywhere. You can't <laughs> You can't get his beats. But, um... So sad. Shit, man. <laughs> just, know, just know that we got the best producer in North America right here. Oh, God. You know? That's a lot of pressure. At the very least... I can take it. At the very least, the best producer in Northern Nevada. That's right. I mean, what, you won that competition... Almost. The only person who beat you in that competition wasn't even from Nevada. So as far as I, you're so the boom. Okay, well. Best producer in Nevada right here in the hot seat. You're looking at him. Somebody in Vegas is pissed right now. <laughs> best, best producer in northern Nevada right here. <laughs> right now. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Links, oh, yeah. Links to stuff will be down there. Links all in the description. Thank you guys for watching, listening, if you're on the audio version. And peace. Love you. Bye.